Hello and welcome to another CentOS video and in today's tutorial we're going to take a long overdue look at permissions. Okay, so I've been referring to permissions many times throughout the series so far but we haven't had an actual video that talks about permissions, but it's a very important concept because as administrators, we want to control what our users are able to do on our Linux servers. And this also applies to laptops and desktops as well. You will run into situations where you will need to look at permissions. It's a very important topic to understand. So if I do ls-l, we get a list view, which is what the dash L option of LS gives us. This gives us more information than we would normally have if we just ran LS by itself. So that's why I always use dash L. And with CentOS, we have the LL option, which is actually a lot easier, but it's just not muscle memory for me, but it effectively does the same thing. The LL command is not a real command, it's an alias, but we're not going to get into aliases in this video. The point is when you activate the long list in LS, you get more information and you'll need to be in this mode to understand permissions. We have several columns in the output here. We have the permission string right here on the left, which is something that we will be going over in this video. We're going to skip this column here. Then in this column, we have the user that owns that directory or file, and then the group that owns that directory or file. I'm going to skip this column here and then this last column or second to last column here basically shows you the date that the object was last modified and then in the last column we have the object itself. Now I've mentioned in a previous video that most of the time if the item is colored blue it's a folder and then if it's colored white it's a file but this one here is red it's a file and I also mentioned that you can't rely on that 100% of the time, but just to make this more realistic, I'm going to also create a file. I'll just create test file, and now we have that. So as I was saying, white typically designates a file, blue typically designates a folder, but you can't always rely on that because colored output is an option of LS. It's actually part of the alias. We'll get into aliases in a future video, so don't worry about that just yet. But the most important thing to realize, and I have mentioned this in a previous video, is that you should be able to tell the difference between a directory and a folder, aka directory, without relying on the colored output. And it's actually not that hard if the first character in the permission string, so this is the permission string, if the first character is D, it's directory. If it's a hyphen, it's a file. So basically what you can see here is we have a number of directories we also have two files. Now this test file right here is something that I just created just now. And this right here is actually a backup of an SD card. When I did my SD card backup video, I just took the time to actually do a backup of one of my SD cards and I forgot to remove it from this laptop. This is actually for a Home Assistant, which is of course beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to mention that in case you were curious what the heck that is. But to understand the topic at hand in this video, we need to understand the permission string right here. And the permission string is actually broken down into four subgroups. And the first subgroup is just the first character, D for directory and hyphen for file, as I've mentioned. And there's actually other things that the object can be beyond just a file or folder. But that's basically what the first column is for, is just to allow you to make that determination as far as what kind of object it is. The actual permissions portion is this section right here, which is actually nine characters. We are going to ignore this period completely. This actually has something to do with something different altogether that I'm not going to go over in this video. And you're not going to see this in every Linux distribution. So don't worry about this. What we're actually concerned about is this set of three groups of three characters. So we have three characters here, 
three characters here and three characters here. So this section here, again, has to do with permissions. Now, before we go over what the individual characters mean, we need to understand what these three subsections actually refer to. So the first subsection right here refers to the owner of that directory or file. We can see that the owner is me. This column here is the owner column. And this section here is the group. Now in my case, the user and the group is the same, but that's not always going to be the case. So now we can basically come to an understanding then that this first set of three characters has to do with me. Now the second group of three characters in this section, which is going to be this right here, has to do with the group. Every file has a user and a group that owns it. So this file here, this desktop directory, is owned by me, and it's owned by my group, or you could say has the J group applied to it. So the group is this set of three characters right here, the second set of three characters. The last set of three characters has to do with everybody else. Everybody that's not the owning user and is not a member of the group associated with that directory or file or object. It's basically for everybody else. It's also known as world or other. So take a minute and just make sure that you understand that so far. There's nine characters total in the permissions portion of this string or this section right here. Nine characters total. Each set of three refers to a different source, user, group, and world, also known as other. So depending on how long you've been working with computers, what these individual characters stand for might be somewhat obvious to some of you. R means read, W means write, X means execute. And these three characters here are not going to be in any other order but this. So you will never have X as the first character. You will never have R as the second character. You'll never have X as the second character. Each one of these three characters is either on or off. If it's off, it's a hyphen. So there would have been a W here because the order is always read, write, execute. There is no execute, read, write. It's read, write, execute. So we can see that the W is missing here. So the group doesn't have the W bit applied to it. Neither does world. So my user then is able to do everything. It's able to read. It's able to write. It's able to execute. Now, execute means something different depending on context, which I'll get to in a moment. But read and write is probably easier to understand with a file, and then I will tell you how it differs with directories or folders. So we will use this test file right here as an example. So my user right here, we can see is the owning user. And again, these three characters right here are associated with the owning user. So my user is able to read the file, so I'm able to see what's inside it. My user is able to write to the file. It can make changes to the file. My user is not allowed to execute. That is often missing by default. That's a good thing. Execute means that we can basically run that file as if it was a script. So I'm going to give you an example. If I want to read the file, I can do cat test file. Obviously, it's empty. There's nothing in there. So to put some content in there, I could just do echo, I'll do hello. And the echo command basically, well, it echoes. But if I redirect that into the test file, and be careful with the redirect because you can destroy a file with that, I don't care, it's a test file. Now I can do cat test file, and it contains the contents hello. I was able to do that because my user has the ability to read the file. If my user did not have the ability to read the file, then I would not have been able to view the contents of the file. Now, I executed this command right here, echo hello, and then I redirected the output into the test file. That's how hello got to be inside that test file. If I didn't have the write permission, I would not have been able to do this. 
I'll give you an example. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. Now you may or may not have this file. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to follow along with this. But OpenSSH is installed on this laptop. So I'll show you the file. I'll just do ls-l. It's slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. That's the config file for the SSH service. You may or may not have this file. And the ls command, if you give it a full path to a file, it just shows you basically all the details about that one particular file. Now this one we can see is owned by root. Root is the group that's associated with the file. And the owner, which you know is root, has this set of three permissions bits applied to it. So notice I'm not the user here. So if I try to do echo hello, then redirect that into etsy ssh sshd config. This is a very dangerous command. Do not run this. Um, it's a bad idea, probably a bad example, but I think it'll work. It tells me permission tonight. I tried to write to the file. I'm logged in as my user, but root is the user that owns it. So my user isn't associated there. My user cannot, uh, basically cannot do this. So let's just try to read it. So cat, then etsy, ssh, sshd, basically same thing again. Permission denied. Why? Well, because root is the owner. Root has permission to read it, but this set of three characters right here are all empty. Read, write, execute is off. And right here, read, write, and execute is off. So that means the user can read it, the user can write to it, the user, aka owner, cannot execute it. Members of the group are not allowed to do anything and other is not allowed to do anything. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode because from now until May 31st, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until May 31st. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give object storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learnlinuxtv. I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, if I was to just do ls-l against the entire Etsy directory, most of these are going to be owned by root. If I scroll up, we can see we have some other possibilities here. Most of the time, you know, the user and the group are the same. That's not always going to be the case. And we can see an example of that here. We have root as the owning user, but a group of DNS mask for this config file right here. So this kind of thing is very common. If you want the group to have different permissions than the user, so members of this group can have special permissions. Members of that group are allowed to read the file, but only the user or owner, in this case, which is also root, is allowed to read it and write to it. Actually, everyone can read it. Group can read and everyone else can read. So literally everybody on the planet can read this file. But in this case, only root is able to write to the file and make changes to it. Okay, so I'll clear the screen. So I mentioned earlier that permissions are different when the object is a directory. We have a number of directories here, for example, the desktop directory right here. And before we continue, you should probably make sure that you at least understand the basics of 
permissions so far, at least as far as how they pertain to files. So go ahead and pause the video or rewatch part of it if you need to, but you'll still probably understand it way better by the end of the video if you continue along. But when you have a directory, the meaning of these permission bits right here change. So if it's a directory, R means that you can read what's inside the directory. And I'm going to use the pictures directory as an example here. So if I do ls-l against the pictures directory, you can see I have a number of files here, basically just the logos for my YouTube channel. I was just playing around with it. But the reason why I was able to do ls-l and see what's inside the folder is because my user has the ability to read the directory. Reading a directory is different than reading a file. Reading a file is to view its contents, like it's the text that it contains or something like that. Whereas reading a directory is seeing which objects are inside of it. And the R basically allowed me to do that. Now, I am also able to make changes to that directory as well. But I could do MV for move, and then I'll move the test file. I'm going to move it into the pictures directory. No problem, I was able to do that. And right here, I'm inside the directory, and sure enough, that test file is there. And the reason why I was able to do that is because my user has the W or write bit set right here, which means that I'm able to write changes. Writing changes to a file means to add, remove, delete, or change the text or contents in some way. And write for a directory means I'm able to change the contents of it, basically move things into it, remove things from it. You get the idea. So if I was inside the pictures directory, and again, there's the contents, I could do rm and then test file. It let me do it. Why? Well, as you can guess, I have the w bit set. I'm able to make changes. Now you just saw me change directory into the pictures directory. How was I able to do that? Well, the reason I was able to do that is because the X or execute bit is set, which allows me to change into the directory. So now you understand which each of these permission bits mean when they are referring to a directory. Again, read, you can see what's inside the directory, write, you can make changes to what's inside the directory, and X means you can go inside the directory with the CD command, basically. Now, going back to files, for example, we haven't gone over what X means when it's a file. I did tell you that is basically executing the file as if it was a script or a program. But what exactly does that mean? So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go back to my main directory here, I'm going to echo... Let's just do ls-l, and I'm going to redirect that into test file. Remember, I deleted test file. So now test file contains the ls-l command. Now what I'm going to do is chmod plus x. We'll go over this command in another video, not in this one. And then I'll list my storage. Notice that it's green, so executable files are typically colored green. You can't always rely on that though because colored output is an option. It's not always turned on. It is in this case in CentOS. The chmod plus x command you can see immediately just gave pretty much everyone, user, group, and world, all the x attribute. So now that attribute is turned on. This test file can be executed as if it were a program. What does that mean? So what I'll do is dot forward slash test file, which means I want to execute a file named test file. Dot forward slash is, you know, current working directory, and we're just going to run test file. I'll press enter. And it did the same thing as ls. Why? Because the test file actually contains the ls command, which means that the x attribute right here is enabled it allows me to execute that file as if it was a program or a script. It is a script, and a script is basically just a text file that includes commands. Now, this is not the proper way to write a script, 
you're going to need to put more than just one command to make a script useful. And there's formatting that you want to follow that I didn't follow here. But I wanted you to see what it looks like to run a text file as if it were a program. And the X attribute allows us to do that. And to change the permission, we ran the chmod plus X command. And I'm going to go over that in the next video. So I guess you got a little spoiler here. That's the command that you would use to change or modify the permissions of an object. So there you go. I'm going to stop the video right here. We are not done talking about permissions just yet. We are going to explore that concept in more detail in the next video. But before you click on that one though, just make sure that you understand the concepts here, that you understand how the permissions are laid out because in the next video, I'm going to show you how to change the permissions of an object. So I'll see you there as soon as I have it uploaded.